authentic form of expression, typically through music. Um, it is one of my extreme passions to do this kind of work. So before I start, let me start in with a story. I was raised in a small Southern Baptist church in Atlanta, Georgia. And I remember when I was about three or four, I was sitting on top of uh, cold church pews, wooden church pews, and church service was getting ready to, to begin. And as we began, um, the, there were two deacons that started to uh, begin to start singing. And they had the Bible in front of them and they would turn to a page and the congregation was sitting there listening. And the deacons would sing from the, from the Bible, I know love will change, or something like that. And then what I recognized and observed was that through the whole congregation, they all began to echo that same verse back in a, in a, a mystical calm response where they sang from a place of their fears, their joys, their pains, their faith, their belief. I know change is gonna go. And that was my first experience of sound and the sacred. Now that journey from sound and the sacred took me on a journey throughout the rest of my life that caused me to start seeking and looking for connections in different cultures and different situations to allow me to get a deeper understanding of how sound really changes people, how it's an undescribable connection with everyone. All right, so a little bit of background. Oh, nope, not that one. So I was a, I'm based in Atlanta, Georgia, in the US. I majored in film and theater and minored in music theory and music composition. I'm a multi-instrumentalist. As of right now, I play about 14 different instruments. Um, I've taught music for the last 15 years, and I've been a meditation instructor for the last uh, 14 years, but I practiced for the last 20 years. And meditation has been really crucial in the unfolding of my creative life and also of my business life as well. Um, I've also been, a I'm also a retreat facilitator and I've performed across the world for the last 14 years. So uh, I spent the last 14 years traveling and playing music for people. And again, going back to sitting in that church and hearing that, that call to sacredness and really being charged to try and follow and find that. So along my journey, I really began to go deeper into the understanding of my own voice and really embracing that. And then um, just really began to, to put it into the relationship. Now I find the relationship with my music is the same thing with my business. And when I see business as a, a, a whole, a total of something, like it's a relationship you're building, like I'm having to be consistent with my marketing, my leads, my finding out what my operations are, dealing with human resources eventually, and my developing my leadership skills and being in Aaron's course has been a great help for that. But music was the same way with me because it was sitting down with an instrument and investing that time and creating a space and a state to be able to explore deeper and into music. Now, along my way, I found my way to one of my first tours was in Australia, in Melbourne, Australia. And I came to Australia for the first time and, and I was really just following my passion. I was an independent artist. I learned how to book my own self and book my own shows. Um, I raised a fundraiser to be able to get the plane ticket to be able to travel around because I knew something was waiting for me in Australia. And one day when I was in Australia, I was in downtown um, center and there was this guy that was surrounded by all these girls. And I began to just really like, like, wow, who is this guy around all these ladies and stuff? And so anyway, we just started having conversations, very charismatic, very, very charismatic at the time. And he told me about a dinner that he was having in Australia. And this guy didn't know me from anyone else on the side of the street. He told me he just lost a million dollars and that he was doing a, a, a session helping, helping um, um, refugees be able to get more job skills. He said, would you come by and just meet and just play? He never heard me play music before. Who knows, I could have sucked. And he invited me out to his event and I wound up going there. And it was a congregation of some really, really interesting people and individuals. That was some of the best Ethiopian food I had had in Australia. And he just, energy was just so, so consuming. And I really appreciated connecting with them. But at that time, I did not consider myself at all a business person. I consider myself mostly as a free-spirited, hippie, 
super spiritual chakras on the lines, um, spiritual person, which I still do. I just had to add a couple of them, other layers on top of that. All right. Um, yes, moving right along. So after leaving, that was, that was in 2014 when I met Aaron and then we went away and I wound up going to India and I needed to go to India because I wanted to buy a sitar. And I wound up going to the city of Varanasi, India. The first picture is from the Taj Mahal, but eventually I went to Varanasi and I wound up sitting down with some people and learning about, sitting down with different sitar teachers, sitar makers and having a conversation about what the purpose of music is and the connection between Western and Eastern music. And there I developed a relationship with meditation and using meditation in a means to connect with your instrument deeper. So from there, I began to come back to the States and began doing workshops for people to connect with their music, which later on led to retreats where I would hold spaces for complete beginners to come and I would teach them how to turn their personal affirmations into songs on an easy to play instrument like the, the the ukulele and I've done these retreats all across the world and for me the most important part for me was was actually bringing people together in one space and allowing them to be the medicine for each other because most of us have blocks that come from our creativity and if I my passion is creating spaces or containers for people to come together and really support Support each other in developing their ability to connect with their authentic expression because one block is just like someone else's block. And the more that we honor each other in this kind of spaces, the more we see when we feel seen and we feel as our expression to be seen and accepted. So it empowers us along our path of in our journey of becoming more creative. So what I have offering now, um, I was going to go to Bali to do one of these retreats. Uh, the beginning of the pandemic, of course, the pandemic happened. So everything got shut down and everything stopped. So I, I got a call from the brother that I met in Australia, Aaron, and said, hey, how would you like to uh, really get into your business? And at this time, I started to succumb towards the business bug and really started to get my retreats together. I was trying to find a way I could scale during the pandemic. And I had faith that something was possible. So I began to put together a holistic ukulele songwriter immersion. Now this immersion is a way for people to really connect with me on a deeper way. And I can do this online much better than I could in a individual or um, a group session only because I was able to have individual access to individual people through a screen. And I developed a program that allowed people to connect with their, to write their, turn their personal affirmations into songs in only eight weeks. And it's a full-fledged process that deals with the whole, the, the totality of a person. We start with an initial strategy session, and then we go to weekly meditation courses. The meditation is primarily to create a state and a space so that your mind is not in the way of your creative process at the moment. And you're able to really do the most you can about connecting with your instrument and connecting with your ability to play. Um, next, we have the weekly holistic ukulele songwriter sessions. This is where I teach the brass tacks of how to play a ukulele to create chord structures that allow you to be able to express this to a, a, a you can express your song to a complete stranger, but if they're a musician, they understand the language of music. And that's my whole goal. Then we have vocal deepening sessions, which connect you deeper with your voice to the ability to express and own and honor your own authentic voice. And then if you compile that with everything else, you have a complete package. We have once one uh, weekly call, a week and then that's what I'm doing right now is I've really been offering my customers uh, for them to um, to document their process of the eight weeks and at the end of the process I create a video showing the transformation because what you don't take um, what's that phrase what you don't chart you'll never see the progress so I create a video for them to be immersed in their process and develop more of a appreciation for their journey and just to give back to my customers as well that's my nine minutes and it also comes with a ukulele meditation kit, which comes with everything you see here. It allows, I'm really a big stickler about space and state. So if you have a space you can come back to to keep creating, you'll build more of that energy and that space, which allows you to do more in the long run of your creativity. So closing thoughts, um, epic picture, by the way. Uh, closing thoughts, my idea for me moving forward to what I've been doing, I've made more money during this last year in the corona, in the than I made my entire life because of the investments I made in myself and investments in making and coaching and my team. But my first closing thought is to, uh, to get a coach because it's amazing. The second is to connect with other entrepreneurs because the people that you're around 
um, just really influence who you are and help support you in your process. Practice meditation because meditation prepares you for the long run because business and our, our journeys with services or products we offer to people is a long-term run. So I find that if you in include meditation, it allows you to be more sensitive at the moment because this is not a sprint, this is a journey. So how you experience a journey has so much to do with what the outcome will be and how you feel moving through it. And then uh, build your vision around your future. This is something I learned from Aaron as well too, to really outpicture what you want and then build your business around that because that's the goal, not the money, not the success or the Instagram pictures or all that or buying the, the, the New Jersey Nets or the New York Nets, whatever you call it. It's more so about your journey and being fulfilled at the end of it. And lastly, play with your passion. For me, my passion is music and I, I can integrate that into my business so that I'm able to really help people speak more clearly and connect with their authentic ability to express themselves. So thank you very much. This is my contact below. And as at this phase, I'm more so looking for um, new clients and key team builders just to be able to create the structure and, and facilitate the best that I can the service that I'm offering people. So again, my name is Haji Basim and thank you so much. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Now that's that's powerful, man. That's powerful. So now, apart from the amazing promotion, I think I got so many learnings as well, Haji, from your teachings. A couple of things that really stood out for me. Some of you have never read the book, but I recommend it again. It's by Robert Greene called Mastery, 10,000 Hours. I think raise of hands, everyone can agree. You've done your 10,000 hours in music training as an apprentice, as a person following the masters. And so I think for me, particularly in the coaching industry, it's one thing to go and get a certificate. It's another thing to be a practitioner that can then become a master. And it was such a masterful journey you took us through and given us a taste of i thought it was barry white but i think uh, you got a you got a gospel voice my friend and so you know it, there was just so much mastery in your in in your in your in your confidence and your delivery and it wasn't so pushy you know so i took so many takeaways from that personally uh but it also shows that you got the mastery i love your packages that you're offering people and i think the biggest thing I also got about what you said is, you know, music in itself as an expression of passion and playing it can also be seen as a business. And I think a lot of us always go, well, I don't want to do that capitalistic thing. But the fact that you've integrated that as just part of a cohesive or harmonious way to express yourself has been really beautiful. So thank you so much again for that presentation. I think I could have gone on to listen to maybe another nine minutes of that too. So we definitely have to get you on board. So those are my few takeaways, but maybe as a gift back to you, my friend, I would love to open it up to the rest of the uh, team that if anyone has any questions or wants anything clarified from Haji's presentation, uh, anyone want to put up their hand or maybe even give a token of appreciation that they learned something, this is the time to let the brother get the gift. So Maya, uh, offer to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll start. I, I loved it. I love the, I was, I was, I don't know why, but I was shocked that you sang in the beginning, which is crazy, but it was the first time I heard you sing. Yeah. And I was so happy that you did it twice, not just once, because mm -hmm. the first time was like a shock. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, and I'm just, you know, and then the second time I was like, okay, I'm really getting it. And and um, so that was really, I, I felt that hearing your singing voice uh, was extremely powerful. It really drew me into your presentation. Mm. I loved all the photos. They were super clear and mm. colorful mm. Um, and very interesting. I like that, that um, you kept the photos on the screen for a long time. So there was just plenty of time to soak in what was in, in each photo. And my favorite was seeing the photo of you and Aaron 10 years ago. You guys were so cute. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> I want that picture. I don't know where you got that. I want it. I had to dig for those pictures to get that. I had to uh, dig. I don't know where I found it. Oh, dude. I yeah. want it. 
Oh, I remember. It was really, really great. Um, and then the, just the last thing I, I agree with um, Aaron, like I wasn't expecting, well, you know what, honestly, if, if I think about it, it makes sense to me that you used um, the last, the last uh, couple of minutes or three minutes or whatever of your, of your presentation to actually tell us about one of your, two of your products and to just, it, it was interesting for me because even though you were pitching two of your products, it felt, it didn't feel, um, it felt, it felt, it felt right. It didn't feel uh, pushy. It didn't feel uh, greasy or sleazy. It, it just felt like, and you know, this is what I do and, and this is what the program looks like. And, you know, here's the kit and this is the reason why I also offer the kit. And mm. so that was nice as well. Yeah. Um, and I loved also just um, getting the, the evidence of your more than, you know, nearly two decades of experience and practice and what you do as well. Um, to see that credibility in, in your, in your 10 minutes was excellent. So yeah, you had my attention. Great job. Thank you, Mario. Love the love, love the love. All right. Anyone else want to give this man a big smoochies? I call them smoochies, but I feel very good. <laughs> Nadia, go ahead. <laughs> Hi, you wow. I'm I'm also the same with Maya. I never heard you actually singing. I mean, how many months that we've been <laughs> meeting every week, literally every week. <laughs> so it was great. It was great to see. I didn't know that you had such a good voice. <laughs> Everybody agree. <laughs> exactly. And I, it, it, it's um, when you said that you were not a business person, I'm like, mm, because I, I, we work with you behind the scenes. And I think you, we, I, I don't know, but me, I learned a lot from you about, about business, about engaging in social media, you know, like sales funnel, you shared everything with us. And then you said, I was not a business person. Okay. So, <laughs> But it was um it was a very pleasant presentation and then you can squeeze it in everything in 10 minutes. It's a really, really great job. And I also love the photo with Aaron. <laughs> very personal, very authentic. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, uh, that's that's Kaji style. Hey, Whoops. Hey. Trash. <laughs> trash my trash my speaker here. No, really great share. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with everything they've said. Thank you so much for sharing that, Nadia. And uh yep, anyone else want to share the love or share some feedback or ask a question? Because uh, there was quite a lot in there. Okay. Yeah. Look at this. It's the inner circle. Come, come to this. Come to the to the table. Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Well, first of all, it was beautiful. I loved it. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now I just wondered if you, if the pandemic would not have happened and you were would have gone to Bali, would you not have had your business education now? <laughs> just wondered. What do you think? What would have happened? I don't. I, I think. I think. I was already starting to put my business together, but there were so, so, so many holes in my boat. I didn't know about it. I was just out in the middle of the ocean of, of, of the market trying to figure stuff out. But it, I would have to say when the pandemic started that put took Aaron into action to start trying to adjust his process because all this stuff was live. And I, when I was in Bali, I went to a couple of his events too as well, but he had to change up his whole format. Then he created the, the inner niche or the, the, the niche circle or one of the 5,000 names he has for his business. And he contacted me. I mean, just to be honest, I'd be like, what is startup? What is juice? Is this? Okay. Um, but then, but then I, um, we just got, he just offered me the opportunity because we had talked, we did a check-in a year before and 
I feel like it sucked because he, I made a bunch of promises. Yeah, man, I'm gonna move to Bali next month, next year. I'm gonna go and raise my, my fund to about, you know, scale to about two, about $2,000 more every, every one I'm making right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm a, and then it just got quiet because life happened and I wasn't focused on my business. So then he reached out to me the next year. was like, hey, how was that to join this process? I'm like, I would really like to. I don't know if I have hundred dollars, but I'll work something out and it worked out and, and here I am. So yes, if, if the pandemic didn't happen, I would have had a different experience. I definitely would have went to Bali. I would have done my retreat. I would have brought my first black kirtan devotional band music to a world stage at Bali, which would have set me on a different trajectory as far as with my life and music, what I'm doing. So it definitely, the pandemic definitely helped me out a lot to get, go through this arduous process of learning business tech techniques and strategy, which I feel this made me more money than I ever have in my entire life just by having these structures put together. So yeah, I'm forever, forever in debt to this guy. I think you're right. already on I'm the happy path. you're here with us. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Sorry, Lisa. What did you say you dropped out? Oh, I was just saying I'm just glad that he's here with us now. Oh yeah, definitely. No, and he was on the journey before we met. So I appreciate the kudos, man. But uh, we all know, we all know. Now I appreciate that. Actually, this is good. I've got a question for you too, because we've had some really big chats over the decade. Um, <clears throat> so maybe if you talk to Haji, the earlier version of Haji who thought business was evil and all that, what advice would you give another artist because you know, this is just, as you know, I, I work with a few people, but it, it does come up a lot in the artistic circles. So maybe question one is why is that? And two, what advice would you give your earlier self now that you've experienced versions of what business could look like and how can you integrate that so that it doesn't seem so alien or evil or any of the other kind of connotations, a lot of the, 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 the stereotypes uh, that are used by the artist industry, maybe I'm, start, I'm generalizing a little bit, maybe too much here, but just using your own journey as an example, what would you share? Uh, first, I'll give him a, a backhand, <laughs> get your stuff together. Yeah. That's the first thing I would do. Um, there was a lack of, so as an artist, or me as an artist, I was very extreme with my with my art because I was very deeply into it. It was it was it was and is not so much as now, but it, it still is a big part of my life. And I devoted so much time and energy towards it being that relationship that I would go without. And I became what you call a starving artist for a long time in my life. Then I started getting hungry, and I was like, "This ain't gonna work for me." So I started to learn some systems. But moving into business, I felt like the responsibility of starting my business would cripple and ruin my ability to express myself and to be an authentic artist as I had in my mind. Um, and that was a huge block for me because creativity is something that kind of flows. It's like more like the feminine element of things. It's very flowy and it comes to you when it comes to you and express when it. So my whole goal was getting in touch with that and definitely allowed me to get more into my feminine. But the business aspect or being to be consistently doing something, grinding at something all the time was more of the masculine, a part of myself I hadn't really dove into. So when getting into it, I felt like I was gonna lose part of myself by doing it, but I found so much more than, than I ever thought. I am a businessman, like I am a entrepreneur. I am offering services that are helping people um, and getting um, energy given back to me for the energy I'm giving out to them and it's reciprocated. And I don't, I, I wish I would have started this path a bit earlier, but I'm glad I'm on it right now. I don't know if that answered your question. No, it did, it did. Cause you know, at the same time I understand it, but I think it's also <clears throat> for both people who've been coaches on the business side or the entrepreneurs who've been in business longer to hopefully develop an appreciation after listening to you. Cause I think as you talked about some of these concepts, some people don't quite understand. Uh, maybe you can just expand on it so it can tidy it up in a digestible way for everyone on both sides of the spectrum. What did you mean by feminine, feminine uh, stepping into your feminine or embracing your feminine or exploring or, or not wanting to lose your feminine and then stepping into your masculine just so someone who's maybe a business person or an artist can just, you know, uh, uh, translate? 
Sure. So in terms of the feminine, the feminine is usually the quality of creativity. And I'm applying creativity towards being a musician. They always say when you have a muse, you're able to create more. The muse is known as a feminine element. So when you're creating and creating songs and just trying to be open to things coming into you, so you're able to produce them or produce them or produce them or produce them or produce them, however it comes out. And secondly, the, the masculine is more of a structured, um, repeatable, logical way to move about and business dwells a lot in the masculine because of the structures and systems that are set up that cause you to be consistently going over them, to be re making revisions, all these things. There aren't really revisions in being created to a certain extent. There can yeah. be. So that's what I mean from that extent, coming okay. from a business perspective um, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a really powerful connection. And I think, like I said, <clears throat> one of the best gifts of having someone like you on this uh, feature presentation is I think it can allow also business people to appreciate the journey of why maybe some artists would resist uh, implementing systems, so to speak, and then come in with a, a better conversation or dialogue to bridge the gap. Because I think for me, one of my biggest goals and passions, back to what you said, is the inner circle concept or the niche, or you'll be quite impressed. You've probably seen I've changed the name again, <laughs> and I'll change it again, is, uh, you know, I, I think it's a universal right for all of us to create opportunities for ourselves and for the people we care about. Uh, but to do that, they're just certain um, uh, energies or techniques, if you like, that are both existent in the feminine realm and in the masculine realm. And it's about, for me, at least bringing those two together to, to be whole, you know? And, and I feel like someone like you really embodies that so well, and you've been through the journey on both sides and obviously reaping some of the rewards and not losing your artistic creativity and still you know as everyone who knows you well enough you still got that big you know heart and compassion for people but at the same time you're a killer man you know and just seeing that evolution over the last decade has been just phenomenal so i just wanted to acknowledge you again that you haven't lost yourself in the process of becoming an entrepreneur but you've probably just added more to who you already are or at least that's how i, I sense uh, from what I heard, would you agree? I agree. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, really cool, man, really cool. And I really hope more people watch this because, uh, you know, we battle with these two sides so often and I just think it's about completing them. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about that there, but uh, thank you very, very much again. Uh, unless anyone else has more to uh, ask, anyone have a burning question or suggestion or idea or... I don't know, takeaway that they want to share before we move on to the rest of the segment? Not yet. Okay, some people are quite shy today. We're going to gonna poke them around later. All right, cool. We shall move on. So thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it, Archie. That was, that was really cool, man. The singing really topped it. Really topped it. So uh, awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, let's move to the next part. So basically, after you guys have heard uh, from our uh, oops featured speaker, then we naturally move to the next part, which is uh, in case you got something from listening to Haji's presentation, you might say, oh, actually, I know someone who's really been talking about getting into music. I think just a few weeks ago, I referred someone to Haji, um, you know, who was complaining, actually, not really complaining, but just suggesting that they used to sing a lot when they were in high school and they just lost their voice or confidence or both. So I said, hey, why don't you call this person? And usually the, the journey of going there is sending them an email. Sometimes that gets lost. So you're just sort of creating a place where you can just send the link, uh, you know, uh, tell us who that person is or how we can contact them or pass it to Haji to contact them. Because again, he can then go through a further one-to-one -one with you to say, this is the journey I'll take your prospect on. Because sometimes most of us want to offer help to someone else or we want to connect someone offering a service or product to uh, loved ones or friends or family, but we sometimes don't want them to feel sold to. So the biggest step that kind of uh, mitigates that feeling for us is we call it a one-to-one. -one. So for example, for me, if you resonated with Haji's presentation and or there's anyone in the network that introduced themselves in those 10 second speech and you're like, I'd like to connect that person with my auntie because they were complaining about some ailment or issue that that person said they might be able to solve. You don't pass them the number of your auntie. What you do is you say, I'd love to connect with Haji for a one-to-one. -one. 
and you use this bit.ly link and then say, hey, I'd like to connect with uh, Haji. And when you connect with Haji, you set up a 25 minute check-in call, if you like. We, we called it one-to-one -one. back in the days. We were like, always meet someone belly to belly, which is usually face-to-face -face is best. But obviously under the circumstances, we don't have that to meet belly to belly on the Zoom chat or screen. But when you get there, what you're basically trying to ascertain is asking a couple of quality questions to Haji to say, okay, Haji, I think my auntie might be a good fit. Can you just take me through the journey you take her through? So he might go, okay, well, you know, I actually have a professional sales funnel that I use to make sure it's not pushy. First thing is your auntie might send us this and then they'll drop into watching a video from me and then we're gonna get a little call. We're gonna go through these series of questions and our price point is about this much to this much, depending on the budget. And if they say yes, either way, they get the ukulele package with us. If they want more involvement from me, they'll get at least one class. And then this is how we rate the satisfaction. This is how we do everything. So it really starts to show you what your auntie or that potential prospect is going to go through. This is the power of the one-to-one -one meeting. Because too often we don't do this and then we pass a contact to someone else. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but this is one of the biggest fears most people have. And then this used car sleazy salesperson comes and pushes them into trying to buy something and then that wrecks your relationship with the person with your relative you know raise your hands who knows what i mean so to minimize that we try to create the journey so i guess there's two parts to this my friends one if you're the person who's got the business opportunity and whether you've been asked by anyone in the network or not be sure to create at least a you know nine to 12 step customer journey that you're going to take your prospect through so you can articulate that to someone in the network this will build the confidence for them to go okay i'll refer my auntie my husband my friends my business or even my boss because i feel confident that if you take them through these uh, standard steps then it won't feel so slippery and pushy yeah so that's one side and then the other side of it also is it allows you to feel confident when you send the links because then at the end of it, you want to get the referral to come back to you like you do when you refer someone to a good movie or a good book. You know, Lisa, for example, sent me so many good books. She, she didn't feel negative towards the author going, oh my goodness, you know, she enjoyed the book. So she wanted to refer the book on to me. And, uh, you know, I've had such a great read of a couple of books she sent. But the point I'm making is no way in her mind would she go like, Aaron doesn't want to read that book. And why am I selling the book to Aaron? It's just she already knows I love reading books and we already exchanged that sort of thing. So what my point is here is if you're the person referring, keep your ears open and your heart open. I guess it's more about just listening to your family and friends, listening to what their interests are, and then being able to connect them to the right person. Okay, this is critical because you're not just trying to push your friends or family to everyone in the network. You're listening into their needs and then saying, okay, based on this, and I remember Aaron likes reading books, for example, in Lisa's case, or I know Haji helps people with music and I've heard his voice. And man, I wanna go back to that chapel, you know, and I know if you like don't have a church service, just go Haji, we're gonna do it together, you know, I don't know, but that's how those connections start to happen. And you just never know uh, how that can turn out. So that's just the importance of paying it forward is that's how that works. We don't get commissions from this in general, but uh, it's just really about passing that on and what goes around my friends comes around yeah okay so i've said enough about that so now in the last section of our uh campfire we now get into the juicy nitty-gritty uh so again in case you've never done this before we split it into two parts first part we're just basically having an opportunity for all of us to identify maybe any now the the nice word politically correct word is constraints but issues is just as good so if you experience any issues now some of you go oh, okay well you know Aaron, i had a personal issue with my boyfriend or husband no no i, I can't help you there <laughs> that's not what i mean what i mean is issues that you had regarding your business that you know my track record there is okay so let's let's stick to the professional stuff uh we have doctors and psychologists and healers and heart opening people in the room you know you can refer the relationship stuff over there but at least when it comes to business and brand and any concerns you have this is what this platform is about and uh, hopefully we can help you more there so how does it work first step again as usual uh, make sure you got a pen and paper uh, there's a good saying a short pencil is better than a long memory so you want to basically scribble down now, some of you don't know this but i i'm a big journaler is that a word i don't know but every week 
every week without fail, I spend a little bit of time on Sundays reflecting on some of the constraints I felt the previous week and those go straight away in my reflection. So by the time I do my coaching session with my coach, I'm already ready and I don't need to sit down there and think. So for some of you who wanna get into what they call the highest level of grit in the grit pyramid, it's actually people who are reflective. So the more you're prepared with your reflection questions, or as I just said, spend time even as an uh, entrepreneur to meditate, I use some of my meditation time for reflections and go what's been arcing me or physically showing up in my body. And I find these answers come to me. I'm just a big believer in writing them down so that you don't have to wait for this opportunity once a month. You can do this every week. So anyway, if you haven't done that or want to get into that practice, I recommend it. But for now, just grab a pen and paper and you know, uh, have that ready and take notes. The second thing is make sure that when you're sharing, it's a balanced two-way share because so many times most of us love to give advice. Yes, that's just how it is. But when we are given advice, we don't seem to receive it. So ensure that if you're really one of those people want to give advice, also be able to take some advice. The third is make sure you always share your solutions and suggestions. All of us are in the same boat, guys. None of us have all the answers. We're all growing. So when you share, just be sure to word your advice as a suggestion, not as an instruction. Okay. So uh, for example, if you're like, okay, well, you know, you mentioned this uh, might have been a potential problem. Um, so maybe my suggestion around that could be, you know, so these are just very inviting words. But the first thing you need to do to before you do that is first identify the problem. So if you hear someone sharing the problem, it's always very, very important to uh, write down the problem that you think you heard so that you can qualify it with the person. And then the second part is when we get to part two, you'll be given a chance to go, okay, I heard this problem from Lisa. I heard the problem was this, this, this. And then Lisa can say, yep, that was my problem. Then you can say, okay, my suggestion to that problem is this. And then we can start to share some solutions because some of you, trust me, have had a problem. There's nothing new in business. There is always someone somewhere who had the same problem and overcame it, overcame it yeah? So it's just really nice to know wisdom is in the group. So number four, uh, this one is always my reminder for myself is you know try and keep it to the point and don't get into a coaching session, Aaron. Because, you know, like sometimes we all have so many ideas of things we can share and it can vary off into a multitude of different ideas on the same concept, but uh, try and just uh, stick to the one thing and uh, cut the ranting. Number five is respect your peers. You know, what, if you want trust and respect, you've got to give it first, right? So these are just a couple of ground rules around that. So let's get into the first part. So I'll just give you guys some clues on how fast and easy this can be uh, to afford us some time in the last part. So step one is maybe list uh, your top 10 problems uh, that or constraints that you might be facing in this new climate. And I've always put new climate here because for some of us, we could be in an old climate, just returning. Some of us have been having a cruisy time during the COVID time and others are really, really badly hit by the environment. And so some constraints are very, very new to a lot of people. So I don't want to assume anything here. I'm just basically saying, just reflect on your February month, you know, some of you have achieved your targets, well done, but maybe there were some learnings there, but uh, some of you maybe didn't achieve your targets and think about, okay, what is it that maybe was the problem? That was it, you know, I don't know, could be even personal discipline, could be uh, you didn't think you had enough time. So it could be another typical time management issue, could be uh, confidence, could be uh, you think you have lack resources, could be you just don't understand what you're doing, whatever it is, but try and relate it to a specific problem. So I'll just give you a couple of minutes to do that now and uh, try and come up with 10, but don't overthink it. Just kind of list the problems. We'll try and come up with solutions later. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that, okay? So think 10 and try and uh, separate them. So many times we're like, think one problem is three problems, you know, but when you start to write it down, you start to go, ah, oh, actually, this is one, the same thing. So this is the power of writing things down. Uh, 
That's a good question there. For Haji. About links. So Haji, you might have to share some links. I think you haven't done that yet. In the chat. All right, when someone gets 10 problems or constraints they want to discuss, uh, just put your hands up or emoji it so I can see time-wise. Think of as many as you can. Sometimes it's good to get them out of your head on paper. All right, how are we doing? Anyone got 10, five, six, two? All right, this is on, nice. Okay, we just use that as a benchmark. So uh, the next one, once you have at least 10 and hopefully they're uh, independent of each other, then you want to do the next thing. Because so many times we don't do the next part, which is the sort part. And then it actually just becomes so big in our mind. So the second part is once you get your 10, Try and rate them in order of your pain points. So zero being, uh, this isn't so frustrating or it doesn't make me anxious. To 10, this is like a royal pain in the ass. This is the pain of my existence, for example. And then just quickly rate the problems that you had from zero to 10 scale. And I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Don't overthink it, just kind of check in and go, oh my goodness. Like there's one thing for me, uh, Michelle, if she was here, she'll tell you. Uh, it's been an issue for about a year. It's really time for me to fix it or just drop it all together because it, it just frustrates me and uh, we haven't been able to solve it. So this is something that uh, we're getting help with at the moment, but it's just, again, came out of this conversation where I was just like, it's just been a high six for too long, you know, so it's time to really knock it out and you find you have more energy, okay? So I'll give you some time for that. cameras off. Yep, okay. So Got some ratings on the pain points. On, oh, sorry, on the problems, yeah. Oh, you guys need a bit more time. No, you're good? Okay, cool, cool. All right, oops. So the next one is now organize those same pain points of the 10 problems into priorities of number one, number two, number three. So the highest should be your number one pain point next to your problem and then problem two problem three so just put a number next to it so that you can go one two three we're looking for the top 10 i'm oh, sorry top three problems that we can actually discuss
And when you're done, just uh, put an emoji or raise your hand. Just the top three. Yeah, did I see a hand up? More or less. Now, are you done? Sort of? Yeah. No one's face looks happy here with the pain points, but uh, we'll get to pleasure soon, I promise. <laughs> okay, number four. What was the deeper issue causing that main issue to occur in each of these top three issues? So for example, you might say, well, I have this problem with marketing. Marketing is the problem, but because in your mind, you're like, yeah, yeah, I just don't know how to do marketing. Okay. But then you say, yeah, and it's very frustrating. Okay. It's a 10. Great. But then the question is, well, what is it about marketing that's frustrating? Well, uh, you know, I haven't read that book that Lisa put in the book club about marketing, actually. So, now we're, okay, so you do know there's information out there about marketing systems and sessions and people doing it okay, but you just haven't dedicated the time to learn how to do that. So the bigger issue now is way not marketing. The frustration is you haven't put in the time to learn how to solve that issue. So we're in time management now as a deep issue. You're like, well, why didn't I put in at least two hours uh, a week in reading about marketing? Hmm. Well, I just don't like marketing. Ah, okay, see, now we're on to a different problem. There's no interest in marketing, see? So you can see sometimes what appears to be the problem or the frustration, it's actually a frustration of lack of interest. Yeah, and then as the great Tony Robbins says, you know, we are either seeking pleasure or running away from pain usually. And if you could take these two leverages and align them so that there's a leverage of seeking pleasure, which is I want to make some sales of my business, but also leverage the what's the consequence if you don't invest the time into marketing. As an example, the two become a spear and it most likely starts to move you in the right direction. Too often some of us go, yeah, I just need more money. But you know, everybody needs more money, but they're not motivated to find solutions to solve that issue, right? But once people go, well, what's the consequence if I don't do that? Well, I'm actually gonna lose my choices. What's the consequence of that? Well, if I don't do this and I'm actually you know, I'm gonna lose my freedom and I value my freedom, people start moving a lot faster. So these are just kind of conversations to have with yourself. And I guess why I isolated those top three to give you that example is sometimes we should try and find a root cause of what's causing the problem versus trying to just answer and solve the symptoms of what causes such problems. Because nine out of 10 times, the initial problem is not the problem, you know? So just, I, I don't know, is that clear? Is everyone understanding kind of what I'm trying to get at here? So it's just always good to kind of try and take it two or three levels deeper and really see that this is issue because you will get to a point where you're like, oh, that's just the issue. You know, putting in the time, it's just not working. It's like, okay. So we've reached a place where you can't go any deeper. Yeah. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to think through that. Very, very important process to go through. Because too often, like, uh, I want to use medical industry as an example, because it's not always everybody in there. But there's a lot of money to be made in treating symptoms. But if you don't treat the cause, and I'm sure Maya has more to say about this, that just keeps reappearing. And you, you end up not solving anything. So always go deeper. Yeah, a couple more minutes there. Try and go three levels deep in each of the three and see in some cases, the root issue is probably similar across the three as well. It gets very interesting. Yep. All right. 
Well done, guys. Okay, number five, share your top pain point in the group in one to two simple sentences. So now what we're going to do is out of those three, you've got some reasons, so you can go work on the other two or three. Let's pick the one that was the biggest pain point with the pain 10 in your top three problems and then see how far you went into the problem so that you can explain yourself. And I guess when it's your turn, just say, okay, identify the biggest problem was this problem, the biggest pain, it was a 10 out of 10 in pain. And I found that the cause for this was this, this, this. And I think it's really, this is the issue. So you don't have to come up with solutions. It's just a simple share. And then what you can do is once you share it, you put that problem in one or two sentences into the chat. And then one of us will also look at that share that you gave, we'll take down that problem and in case we have a suggestion to solve it. That's what we're going to do in part two. Okay, so we're just going to go through that uh, simple exercise now and see what everyone else comes up with. Okay, so let's start with the very happy looking face of Nadia. Nadia, would you like to <laughs> share your top problem and maybe the root cause that you think is the problem to that problem? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay, I'm. I think out of the ten, which is almost everything, is individual, not related to each other. Maybe only two or three. But anyway, the top pain wow, point is week. that I'm impatient. <laughs> I want to finish everything, and I come across hurdles, and it's not it's not unsolvable. It just takes time, and I'm very impatient because I have other things. Also interesting thing that I need to finish. <laughs> I don't know what the root cause is. Uh, yeah, of your impatience, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's, that's, all... that's good. That's clear enough. So you have all these problems and they all come back to, you know, the solution, but you just don't have the it's patience to wait. So. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. It's not like it's unsolvable. It's just I've, or I've targeted for a certain date and... Oh, I cannot meet it, and then I've already, I've already scheduled these dates to do something else. But then, you know, now I feel like I'm a headless chicken. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I have to do this, but I have to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's good. That's that's well articulated. I think uh, you know everyone got that clearly. So just write that in a few sentences in the chat. We'll come back to it. But yeah, thanks for sharing. So that's basically what we do first: is we just share the problem, and make sure we can qualify that we understand the problem that you shared. Um, yeah, and then we'll see if anyone's got suggestions or been in that situation and what they did differently, maybe. Uh, okay, cool. Anyone else want to share their problem? Uh, Maya, looking excited there, so I'll pick you next. Um, yeah, so mine, I guess this month was basically just a feeling of burnt out and em emptiness. Mm. And... Um, and so that kind of fed into what I was feeling was a lot less creativity and a lot less in energy. Uh, uh. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah. So burnout feelings, which led to lack of creativity and energy, yeah? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And what do you think caused the burnout? Because I know the consequences were. Right. But what, remember the question there is what was the root cause for the burnout? Because where you went with yeah. symptoms, yeah, that came up after that. Right. So, I mean, for me, the, the root cause is the, is the kind of high expectations uh -huh. and, um, almost like unrealistic expectations uh, and probably trying to do too many things on my own and not asking for enough help. Uh, uh, um, yeah, and then in some things, uh, just putting too many things on my plate, <laughs> not, not um, you know, not allowing 
there to be more space and time. Uh, uh. So it's similar to Nadia, I think, like a, a different a different type of impatience, <laughs> a different <laughs> response to impatience. Of like, I'm impatient, yeah. so I'm just gonna do every write everything I need mm. down and do all of it. And no, <laughs> yeah. it's like no. Mm. And then and then just disappointment from that and burnout, emptiness. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Okay. No, that's that's that, you know, and, and it's also quite easy for us to get bogged down in the mud of the symptoms so i really understand that but for now if it's possible just hold that hold at the place of the burnout itself and then you went deeper into mm. why it happened see so you went probably into layer two of the step before the result so you're getting closer to the cause you know and i'd recommend try and go another level from there of okay this impatience as you said but so you know we all kind of went okay um i can see i'm impatient and then we try and start solving why that happened i'm like no no what what caused that see and that's just the only question to answer oh well you know it's because uh, this happened before that okay so that's where you should stay you know right. don't try and give yourself too many reasons why you didn't it's just this was the cause right one of the causes right until there's no more causes uh, otherwise, we'll easily live in the symptoms because this is how even the medical does really well. We all just want to get rid of the symptoms because that's where the pain seems to manifest, right? But that's yeah. there's always a precursor to that. So that's why I just want to take you guys in the exercise for now. And uh, I think you went one layer, but I think you could probably go two more as to okay. before the burnout, you were doing these things, right? So no need right. to burn, beat ourselves up about not being creative because the burnout happens. So what tends to happen before this burnout moment? There's certain misaligned activities that you engage in there. Okay. So what are those? You know, because right. those cause the symptom of burnout. Okay. You follow? So now there's yeah. some train of thought. See if you can just go level one and then try and write something in the comments there. So it would be a really clear problem. Like I tend to do this, then it leads to burnout. Ah, okay, we're onto something there. You know? Okay. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, Lisa, what about yourself? Yeah, I guess mine also boils down to impatience in the end, because <laughs> I've really noticed that now that my other work is done, it's finished, and now everything I do is my own responsibility. And I am afraid that I'm missing something mm. because there's nobody else anymore. I don't have a team anymore who's working with me. Mm. So I need to think of everything and I still need some education on that. And so I'm, I can't wait to have all that knowledge. So I know I do things right and in order. I even did a call today where they told me, we're not supposed to have that call um, now. It's in a month. Why do you need to have this call? Now? <laughs> Just want to plan ahead, you know? And, <laughs> and so uh, I guess, yeah, it's also an anxiety, um, impatience thing, mm. um, not to do anything wrong at the moment with doing it by myself. Yeah. Mm. This, is, this is good stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a lot you said there. And I think. Again, I, I don't want to get into it. it's not coaching mode. It's more just supporting you guys to try and get to that last step of going deeper with your question so that you can come up with a real question. No, no, not that they, that was all true, but a question connected to the course. Yeah. So the reality is, it's an, I, I don't know how else to say this, but it's, it's a first world problem for all of us to be impatient. It's just technology has sped us all up. So impatience is a byproduct of a lot of the algorithms that are preset changing human behavior as we speak you know we're being new we're being reprogrammed now that's another story for another time but that in itself isn't really going to help us in terms of living in a modern world so just using that as a question i think we all have experienced impatience at some level right so what i'm saying to all three of you lisa nadia and uh, maya is perhaps try and challenge yourself again to go deeper into it because where you have the power to 
take full responsibility for a particular feeling, you have the full power then to change it. Do you follow? As much as that doesn't really sound very good to digest. So for example, if I say to myself, okay, Aaron, uh, now you're frustrated. Okay, good. But that in itself isn't going to help me. Yeah. So I need to go deeper and go, like I was sharing earlier, it's like, okay, I acknowledge I'm frustrated, but what did I do to make this point happen? Yeah. Then I'll kind of look at creative ways of understanding my schedule maybe, or I didn't ask that why question for clarification. So my listening skills aren't too good. That leads to my frustration, you know, because just to stay in frustration isn't empowering in itself. You guys follow where I'm going with that? Yeah. So uh, as, as, as a conscientious team, I just want us to go a little bit more in the extra mile, the growth factor in the core values we just talked about and try and go beyond the frustration. You know, what's causing the frustration that's within your power is basically the question in there. Because the technology part speeding us up no matter what we do. Wi-Fi blocks up, we get frustrated with Zoom dropping out. You know, once upon a time we had dial-up, that was insane. <laughs> you know, this wouldn't even be possible. So the minute you bring it into perspective, that's no longer issue, but you're still frustrated. Then what's in your control? You know, what's in your control? Um, and, and what's causing that feeling of needing to be super prepared in Lisa's case? Because we all know Lisa and everybody, you can prepare all you like, uh, but what's that saying? Uh, you can be completely prepared until someone punches you in the face. And in business, you're getting punched in the face every day, <laughs> right? Who knows what I'm saying? So that metric isn't necessarily useful in, in this context because you're just going to have to be prepared enough. Yeah. You're going to have to have your product good enough. And then the market will tell you what it needs to tell you for you to modify it. So the enough concept is quite difficult uh, to grasp but I know the people who avoid perfectionism, for example, and move into progress thinking, tend to be less frustrated in, in, the, in their journey, yeah? So just some kind of pollinating things out there just to say, you know, what can we go further than impatience for all three of you? Because if we don't, you might not get the breakthrough uh, that you're seeking. Yeah, and if you're looking for it, it might not be. Okay, um, Haji, what about yourself? How far did you go? I just stepped away for a moment, um, oh, but okay. I know talking about the problem points, right, or where yeah. our pain points yeah. are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so so my main one has been time, and I've been looking at some YouTube videos, time, how to manage my time, because like I look at your schedule when you know, in our sessions and you'll have your calendar, you'll have something with a bunch of colors and stuff on it. <laughs> and it, it's just really interesting and kind of overwhelming, but I know that if I'm consistent with my time and what I do, I'll make progress a lot quicker because there's still some of that creative flow. Like, oh, I want to feel like doing this video for marketing. Or I want to feel like responding to these people at this certain time. And it's not a feeling thing. It's more of a schedule because yeah. what doesn't schedule, what's not scheduled, Nine times out of ten won't get done. So just really implementing that more into my life and dealing with my resistance against it. Uh, so, well, that's there. It is. That was good. So there is a resistance against scheduling, yet you are trying to manage your time or or multiply. We had this conversation, but there's a multiplying of time attitude versus a manager of time. You know, this is that perfection versus progress thing again. Now, these all sound like buzzwords, but my friends, it's quite different. You know, some people come into their day and they want to multiply their time. Others come to manage it, right? Now, you can't really manage 24 hours. Whether you're alive for it or not, it's going to happen with or without you. You can't kind of like put it in the fridge. You know what I mean? So um, maybe a, a deeper question there was, there is resistance and I caught that. So why is there resistance? You know, what's the problem that's causing the resistance? Uh, me would be the first thing, my, my thinking, my habitual pattern of thinking 
about just wanting to flow for a little bit and have to bring it back into it's just it's me i feel like it's it's internal it's my thought mm. my thinking pattern mm. so what do you think is the problem with your thinking pattern you know so we're going you know um let's see <laughs> you know repetition yeah <laughs> Re- mundaneness so yeah yeah mundaneness yeah. yeah so what's your definition of mundaneness and why are you allergic to it or resisting it or what does it mean if you're a mundane person does it mean you're not an artist or I don't know what's the identity around that sure yes I'm not an artist because I'm doing the <laughs> office kind of mechanical in a small, in a small <laughs> cubicle like this trying to type with books all around me and stuff that's my whole life there was this movie called The Incredibles I don't yeah. know if you saw it but it was oh, I love it. yeah 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 it, it, out of my mind, inside of my, my mind and my heart, there's this one part where he was no longer a hero yeah. and the, the main, the dad was in the typing yeah. in his computer. I was like, I'll oh, yeah. never be there. That is the epitome yeah. of unsuccess. And, and so anything related to that causes a block in me. Mm. So I just, but I'm still, I'm doing it right now. So, yeah. <laughs> so no more credibles for you is what you're saying. That's the solution. <laughs> just that one, that one scene. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, who's learning something here? It's just a, it's a good conversation to have with yourself and other people uh, about this why question. You know, we, we're very odd creatures and we're running out of time, but we're very odd creatures. But my point is guys, maybe when you have your little council group again, just give yourselves enough space to have a conversation around your pattern. And I don't know if you find this as you're processing the conversation, you start answering your own questions or you start hitting some of the uh, narratives that aren't serving you. And you're like, yeah, why, why, why was I thinking? And then you just start to process it yourself in the moment versus someone saying, you know what you should do? You should do this or have you tried this? Or here's the tool, here's the technique. These techniques don't work. You know, my calendar will not work for anyone else but me. I'm just telling you, it's, it's just my calendar. You know, I built, in, I built into it for me. It was choice. All of it was choice. So there's a lot of freedom <laughs> in in discipline, you know, for me. But that wasn't the me that was in that photo hard you were sharing. I built it in as I went because I went through this process of having conversations with people like you and just asking myself, why am I, why am I resisting that? What's the story around that? You know, and a lot of the stories we have, my friends, are based on an environment where we just inherited so much of our thinking, you know, parents, family, friends, certain circles just soaks in, but some of that you didn't even come up with yourself. And apparently it's something like 60 to 80% of what we fight for. It's not even things we chose to believe. Now that's a noodle. That's a noodle, you know? So allow me to say, if that's true, and you can Google this for yourselves, then some of these resistances are just someone else's shadows. And so we have to have a conversation with that thing and face it and then discuss who do you want to be after that conversation? And that's your choice. But to not have a conversation and just let it run your life, well, then you're running on the programming of someone else. That's a scary prospect. And that someone else probably inherited it from someone else. And on and on and on it goes. And you're in the 21st century, or whatever century this is, and some people still think the world is flat based on a program. That's some scary stuff. You follow? So it's not change it. It's just have a conversation in your council groups and go deeper, which is what this exercise is about. Sorry, we're going into... Inner circle chats. Yeah, this is going to come up tomorrow whenever the inner circle thing is. Um, so let's move to, to step two. But that's why I was just trying to help you guys is what I just did with you, you can do yourselves. It's just be that support person for someone else and just kind of go, I get what you said. And I heard you say this resistance. You caught it, right? Like I did with Archie and all of you. Okay, I'm frustrated. I'm impatient. Got it. Now, why is that? You know, step, why is that? Is the next question. But if we leave it at, oh, yeah, I'm just frustrated. We can't move and, and, and it's not going to serve you, right? Or I'm resisting my time management thing. Okay, cool, got it. Why is that? 
And then that conversation you start having yourself, you start to see a separation between this algorithm and yourself. So I really welcome you to that conversation. And it might be true, might not be, but I think uh, uh, it's worth the time. Okay, just in a couple of seconds. So did anyone out of the uh, problems that everyone shared have anything to share as a solution for someone else? Like, did you hear someone go, hey, someone said this, uh, I think I need to, I can, I, can, I can answer a suggestion on that. Does anyone have a suggestion? We'll just free for it because we've got like eight minutes. Um, anyone have anything they wanted to show someone else that could be useful? Yeah, Lisa, go ahead. Yeah, I have something I just thought of um, with Hachi's share because I just recently watched a YouTube video where a guy is um, reading up on artists' schedules and kind of learning them himself, like, I don't know, like Van Gogh and he's working all night and getting up at 11 and like he's just, uh, there's also a book about it and he's just trying different kind of artist schedules and see how it changes mm. his routine, how effective he is. And I thought that's so interesting because they're all so very different. So I, I will see if I can find that link mm. again or maybe in the book because I don't think there is like a nine to five schedule for everyone, but some they have <laughs> crazy nightlife activity, mm. energy, creative, mm. creativeness, mm. and um, maybe there's some inspiration for you in that. Yeah, no, I think I want to, I want to read that too. I'm getting to experimenting I will different schedules. Put it in the group chat then. Yeah, because for a long time, some of you met me back in the days, I inherited Richard Branson's schedule, the four hour sleep thing for a while, years, you know, uh, but I'll be honest, that doesn't serve me anymore. <laughs> you know, it, it just doesn't. Not that it was bad, but it served me for a while when I was really, I was you know, Gary V style crushing it. So Lisa, I really love that. And I think it's not necessarily, perhaps I suspect not just beneficial for artists, but I think it's beneficial for everyone to get into this uh, diversification of trying out different schedules to find the one that, that fits. I think there's a lot to be said. And then again, as you grow, guys, in your business, you get into different seasons. You don't want to be grinding it all the time. Right, Nadia? It just doesn't serve anyone, you know. Uh, but at the same time, you also don't want to be shanti shanti all the time. You ain't going to get nothing done, <laughs> you know. So, you, and, and I think what even might be cool is like, I know there's certain hustle schedules i just pick off the shelf and i just like put it in my head and i'm in you know and i'll be in for like 90 days and then after a while i'm like okay thank you created my content time for the book writing guy and i might pick one of these artist schedules and i'm up at stupid hours doing stupid stuff and sleeping all day you know that that's just 4 a.m is the time for me to write so i, I just have different uh, schedules depending on where I am in the wave of things. So if that helps, Lisa, I think that'll be really useful. And I definitely would love to get my hands on it and maybe pass it on as well. But I think it's across the board. Okay, cool. Uh, maybe we take one more. Uh, Nadia, you have any uh, suggestions for anyone on what to do about being impatient? Anyone to anyone called Nadia? To Nadia, maybe? Um. I think I need to dig deeper. Um, what is the main holdup mm. that creates the holdup of the schedule? Mm. And that is probably the same root cause, not the same root cause. I mean, it probably this. I will find the root cause there as what you suggested to Haji. Mm. Must be some points that I try to avoid. I don't know. I need to find out. Yeah. I will find out. Yeah. yeah. And it always, it's always fun to start with talking to family and friends. Hey, what's your view on time management? Ah, you hear a story, but some of that story might be so familiar to you. You're like, hey, that's where I got that from. <laughs> you know, like I had a similar chat with my family about money. The response was immaculately what I used to think. Fascinating. Huh? But I caught myself asking the question going, I totally don't believe that anymore. But at least I could then rest my head to go, ah, oh, that's the voice of such and such relative in me, you know, and not fight it or rebel, but just kind of go, thank you for your advice. 
I would pick my choice from this, you know? So these are just self-talk gimmicks, but uh, sometimes they work. So yeah, good point, uh, Nadia. I'd love to hear your feedback on it, yeah? Okay, uh, guys, uh, out of interest, I think we have to put some of the others more on um, Facebook or chat later now in um, the niche practitioner. We'll try and cover them there. So hopefully everyone has put some of their questions there and we'll try and cover it uh, in the last few minutes. So I just wanted to quickly close for those who've never attended this. It's kind of trippy because we're recording it, but they're gonna come. Check up for the neck up. Some of you don't know this, but we have just made a few uh, modifications on the um, entrepreneur, it's now the business stage assessment. It's called the entrepreneur stage assessment because we're just finding a lot of people. Some don't have a business and they get a bit intimidated if they don't have a team. And so the whole world was just a little bit too much. So the word entrepreneurial stage assessment is just a link. Some of you, if you haven't done it in 90 days, I recommend you do it. But it's uh, similar to what you've done in the past. It's just now we're trying to take the individual in more into consideration at this stage. And then when you have a team, then you do the business health check. So people like Nadja, your team's grown, even though they're collaborators, partners, you're dealing with a dynamic of more than one. It's super, super helpful to do the business health check, which is not this link here, it's the other one, because then we, you're gonna have to start putting in processes in place, which I know you have. Okay, so uh, everyone knows, uh, and you can see with the tribut colors where this is going, we're trying to standard, standardize our uh, programs and deliveries so that at least when you're color coded or you know that if you're in the green team, you'd be doing incubator stuff and workshops and advice. If you're in the blue team, it will be acceleration advice and workshops. And then if you're red team, it's attraction. And that's kind of where we're going to start uh, discussing things. But obviously the business health, uh, you want to get to at some point where you have choices and freedom to step out of your projects and have other people competent. Obviously you're looking at getting solid on your traction stuff okay but that term is it so this book came recommended from yours truly lisa lisa absolutely love this book so uh, if you guys haven't read it i recommend it because there was a bit of a dichotomy around burnout uh uh stress and whether it's good or bad but then also some really compelling study and i love this guy adam grant as well who uh, gave some finishing touches to this book. This dude is just controversial as hell. But uh, if you got the stomach for it, jump and read some of the books because just the data and the science is in. Uh, you know, there's a lot of urban myths around the word work and how it came to be, but also where stress came from and how we, I think I've already shared with you, this confirmed some of the things I was talking about, about that, you know, Burnout is really real, but in most cases you dig deeper, you find that there was just a long time misalignment of activities and how we use our time. Um, and then you find other people just working around the clock because they're passionate and I'm not encouraging that stress is good or bad. It's just having stress isn't a good idea, but how do we translate that and what does it mean is actually proving to be of very significant scientific relevance than the word itself, yeah? so more of that in the book. So if you're one of those people just trying to find some sense of everything and how much you should work or not work, there was just some really compelling conversations in there. Alisa, is there anything you wanted to add after you read the book, your takeaway uh, outside what I got out of it? Uh, sure, really there's also a TED talk that maybe is easier if you don't, mm. if you don't yeah. have the time to read the book. Um, mm. Like I saw that one first, I think like five times. Mm -hmm. It's also really nice to watch. Um, so I can send the link in our group as well. Yeah, that'd be great. No, really, really insightful. And again, there's no right or wrong with this stuff, guys. It's just really fascinating to at least get a perspective uh, on, on, on this stuff. Okay, cool. And yeah, so next steps, you guys are already part of the tribe thing. We don't need to go into it, but for those of you that have asked, uh, we're doing a bit of a revamp, but we're just encouraging before you start paying for coaching programs or anything, we still want people to be part of our community, come in and join the practitioner on Facebook, it's free, the courses are free there, and just get your head around some of the processes that we have, and then obviously after you do the business assess assessment, you know when you're ready or not ready for engaging in some of the relentless work some of these guys in this group are doing, because you know, everything comes at a price. So we just wanna be clear that you're ready for the journey as well. Okay, so that brings us to a close on the dot. 
happy birthday my friends thank you for staying back and haji again thank you for that really really amazing uh presentation i think having um some of the tribe members presenting has been super super awesome so uh, if you guys are thinking of coming to do a presentation, the answer is yes, let's do it. Uh, so we're really keeping it on the tribe track for a while. Uh, not saying strangers and uh, high celebrity entrepreneurs aren't welcome, but uh, I think it's really nice to celebrate the group as well. So really enjoying the richness and the organic uh, experiences of rediscovering each other here. So if any of you guys here want to do another future presentation, let us know. Um, and uh, that brings us to a close. So if you've got any other questions or anything, please put them on Facebook Live and on the groups. And I look forward to seeing you guys same time next month and we can celebrate your successes and failures and try and solve some key questions. So have a great night, my friends. Thank you very much. And uh, unless you guys have any other burning questions, let me just go around the room and ask about takeaways and then we can all go to bed or at least wake up or go to sleep if it's in Haji's case. So uh, Lisa, take away from today. What would you say? Um, yeah, I, I find it very interesting that our um, 